back with the latest Asian news compilations, and here they are. Malaysia condemns North Korea's decision to cut diplomatic ties with Malaysia. Malaysia's foreign ministry denounces a decision by North Korea to cut diplomatic ties, describing the move as unfriendly and unconstructive. In a statement, the ministry says Malaysia will close its embassy in Pyongyang in response and order all diplomatic staff at the North Korean embassy in Kuala Lumpur to leave the country within 48 hours. The state media KCNA reports North Korea earlier announced it will sever diplomatic relations with Malaysia after a court in Malaysia ruled that a North Korean man could be extradited to the United States to face money laundering charges. United States says South Korea's alliance is important due to China's challenges. Seoul's Defense Ministry says United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin hold a meeting with South Korean Defense Minister Su Wok and pledge to continue providing extent deterrence, including the United States nuclear umbrella. The ministry adds both sides also reaffirm their shared goal of achieving complete denuclearization and lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. Given the unprecedented challenges posed by both the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and China, the U.S. ROK alliance has never been more important. I am here today to reaffirm to the, uh, the United States commitment to the defense of Re the Republic of Korea. Austin and Blinken were said to hold two plus two talks with their South Korean counterparts and meet with President Moon Jae-in and other senior officials until Thursday, March 18. The people of Yangon built complex barricades to protect them from the military. Residents in Yangon were building a complex barricade with sharpened bamboo sticks and sandbags amid ongoing protests and a bloody crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrations. Some are also scattering bricks in the streets to create obstacles for security forces, a tactic adopted from Hong Kong protests. <laughs> These barricades are for our protection, as the soldiers are patrolling during the whole day and night. Parts of Yangon have been placed under martial law. Thousands of residents have fled the industrial suburb of Hanglantaya, where security forces killed 40 people and Chinese financed factories were set ablaze. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group says in this violence more than 100 protesters have been killed and security forces try to crush a wave of demonstrations. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the military ousted Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government on February 1st, detaining her and members of her party drawing white international condemnation. Australia donate a thousand locally vaccines and asked the European Union to release one million doses to help Papua New Guinea after the spike in COVID-19 cases in the country. Australia will ask European Union to release one million doses of a COVID-19 vaccine for neighboring Papua New Guinea, which is struggling to manage a dangerous spike in COVID-19 cases. Papua New Guinea official record, more than 2,000 cases since the pandemic began, a figure expert says vastly underestimates the true outbreak. Prime Minister James Marape says COVID-19 had broken loose as he warned local hospitals will soon be overwhelmed. Marapi are just people to avoid unnecessary travel, but his warning came as thousands of people gathered to mourn the death of Michael Somare, PNG's first Prime Minister, after independence from Australia. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison says Australia will donate 8,000 locally produced COVID-19 vaccines to Papua New Guinea as an immediate response to the outbreak and will make a million doses available as soon as they arrived from Europe. 
More recent wars and controlled outbreak can produce a new variant of the virus that will affect not only Papua New Guinea but the wider region. Canberra will suspend all travel to Papua New Guinea. Jokowi urges the ASEAN leaders to hold a high-level meeting to discuss the situation in Myanmar. Indonesian President Joko Widodo calls for democracy to be restored and violence to be halted in Myanmar and for Southeast Asian leaders to hold a high-level meeting to discuss the situation there. Widodo says in a virtual address that the safety of the people is top priority as he urged for dialogue and reconciliation in the country. Saya akan segera melakukan pembicaraan dengan Sultan Brunei Darussalam. I will immediately call the Sultan of Brunei Darussalam as the head of ASEAN to as soon as possible to hold a high-level ASEAN meeting to discuss the crisis in Myanmar. ASEAN yang membahas krisis di Myanmar. Brunei is currently chair of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations. They are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines. Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Japanese Prime Minister will meet Joe Biden to discuss their personal alliance next month. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says he wants to deepen his personal relationship with the United States President Joe Biden during his trip to the White House next month. During this opportunity to visit the U.S. in early April, I would like to deepen the personal relationship of trust with President Joe Biden and further strengthen the Japan-U.S. alliance. Suga adds that he wants to discuss topics such as China, the coronavirus pandemic, and climate change with Biden. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin paid a courtesy call to Suga as they visited Japan for the so-called 2 plus 2 meeting with their Japanese counterparts to shore up Asian alliance in the face of growing assertiveness by Beijing. Suga is said to be the first foreign leader to meet with Biden at the White House in April. President of the Comoro Island thanks China for helping to fight against COVID-19. Comoros President Azali Asomani thanks China for its assistance to the Comoros in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. A Chinese medical team arrives in Moroni, the capital city of the Union of the Comoros, as they embark on a mission to help the Comoros in the fight against COVID-19. A batch of COVID-19 vaccines and medical supplies provided to the Comoros by the Chinese government also arrive in Moroni on the same flight. Asomani attends the welcome ceremony held at the Moroni International Airport, and during his speech, Asomani welcomed the Chinese medical experts as well as the donation of vaccines and medical materials. For exprimer notre gratitude à la République Populaire de Chine, I would like to express our gratitude to the People's Republic of China and to His Excellency President Xi Jinping and salute this fraternal and generous gesture which will allow us to further strengthen the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and the Comorian population even more effectively. The COVID-19 and ainsi de protéger encore plus efficacement la population Comorian. The President also thanks China for its constant support as well as its precious and generous assistance since his country's accession to independence have contributed to the socio-economic development of the Union of the Comoros. The Chinese medical team consists of 12 medical experts who specialize in areas such as respiratory and critical care medicine, public health, laboratory testing, and traditional Chinese medicine. The Chinese medical experts will cooperate with local doctors in a three-month anti-epidemic mission. Premier of Queensland says the COVID-19 situation in Papua New Guinea is a major concern. Queensland Premier Anastasia Palasuk says the coronavirus situation in neighboring Papua New Guinea was a major concern after 250 people tested positive for the virus from 500 tests done by Australian health workers in the country. Queensland also confirms that the six cases that tested positive in hotel quarantine, two are from Papua New Guinea. It's right on our doorstep and it is a real risk 
And as you know, that's why we're getting um, our Torres Strait Islanders vaccinated as quickly as possible. Palazuk adds that she hopes to speak to the Prime Minister during the next 24 hours. Co-leader of Myanmar Tenth ASEAN Defence Meeting for the first time since the power struggle in Myanmar. The state-run television shows Myanmar's coup leader, Senior General Ming Ong Leng, take part in an online video conference with other ASEAN defence chiefs in his first international engagement since seizing power. The news program shows powerful military chief Ming Ong Leng sitting next to other Myanmar military heads. There was no indication the nation's crisis was discussed. Western countries have condemned the military coup and called for an end to the violence and for the release of Myanmar's elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi and others detained since the coup. Asian neighbors have offered to help find a solution, but the military has shown no sign of seeking reconciliation. The army has defended its coup, saying its accusation of fraud in November 8 election, swept by Suu Kyi's party, were rejected by the Electoral Commission. It has promised a new election but not set a date. Thailand celebrates Elephant Day, hopes that tourism will recover in the country. Thailand held a fruit banquet for dozens of elephants in the ancient capital Ayutthaya with hopes that coronavirus travel restrictions will ease soon and foreign visitors will return and revive the tourism industry. The feast is part of celebration to mark Elephant Day and in past years, it is a big draw for foreign tourists. <laughs> We, the elephant people, are hoping that the government will open up the country to welcome foreign tourists in order for them to bring in income so that we can pay for the elephant food and compensation for their handlers. We hope that the tourists will help us and all 3,800 elephants to survive. <laughs> The tourism-reliant country has yet to lift a travel ban imposed last April to curb the outbreak, keeping most foreign travelers and investors away. Elephants have been a source of national pride and cultural identity for Thailand throughout its history, used for labor, transport and in battlefield triumphs by warriors and kings. But animal rights groups have long been calling for the elephant camps in Thailand to end animal shows and rides, branding the shows a form of animal abuse. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy by wash your hands and continue to maintain social distancing rule. Do not forget to use your mask. Bye.